Hello everyone, my name is William and I'm a Stratasys Application Engineer for Go Engineer. Today I'm going to show you how to make an effective vacuum form tool using the Fortis software Insight. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this application, I have a diagram here that explains it in detail. Vacuum forming is the process of heating a thin sheet of plastic and pressing it against a tool. Vacuum pressure is then used to remove the air between the tool and the sheet. This is what allows the sheet to have the exact same shape as the tool. If we're dealing with a female mold, a plug may be used to guide the sheet into a cavity. And this is an example of an ABS tool. And this is one of the parts that it produced. Vacuum forming is used for the packaging of all types of consumer products. There are a few things to consider if you want to design a vacuum tool for 3D printing. When you're dealing with a female mold, you need to make sure that your cavity depth is no more than 75% of your cavity width. For example, if your cavity width is 4 inches, then that means your cavity depth cannot be more than 3 inches. Another thing to consider is draft angle. 5 to 7 degrees is always recommended, however you can do more. Also, when you're 3D printing these tools, you need to make sure you take shrinkage into account. For a male tool, the shrinkage is 0.4 to 0.6 percent. For a female tool, the shrinkage is 0.5 to 0.7 percent. Okay, so after you print your tool, it's recommended that you use a release spray before every pull. This makes it easier to remove the part from the tool after the cycle is complete. LU708 works great with all of our FDM materials. It's made by Sprayon. I've seen these online go for as low as $8 a can. So let's take a look at this tool I have here, and the first thing I want to show you is that there are no vacuum holes. This entire part is solid, but inside allows us to modify the fill, so we're going to make this part really porous so that it helps with the vacuum forming process. So the first thing I'm going to do is slice this part. And I'm also going to add default tool paths for double dense sparse. I'm going to go to top view. And as you can see, we now have double dense rasters throughout the part. However, when we get to the bottom, we have these four cap layers. These solid layers will limit the airflow through the part, so we need to modify them. Now, we want the bottom of the part to be porous, but we also don't want it to cave in on itself during the vacuum forming process. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some geometry to the base. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the tool paths. And I want to start on the bottom layer. We need to use the offset command to make this new geometry. So for the direction, we're going to say inside close curve. For the distance, we're going to offset 0.5. And we do want to keep the original. Okay. Now we're going to offset this curve by 2 thou. And although you can't see it, I'm going to zoom in so you can see that I did offset that by 2 thou. So the reason we did this is because we want the base to have two separate fill characteristics. To make sure we bypass the cap layers, we need to copy these two curves up to layer 8. So go to edit copy curves through Z, select the two curves that you want to copy, and we want to specify through Z coordinate, which is layer 8. Hit OK, and although it doesn't look like you did anything, if you go to ISO view, you'll notice that you did copy those layers. OK, so now I can modify the fill parameters for each section I created. For that, I'm going to go to Tool Paths, Custom Groups, and I'm going to make two groups. The first group will be for the inside section we created. So this inner rectangle right here. I want this area to be doubled in sparse just like the rest of the interior. So I'm going to make a new group. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select double dense rasters for raster fill parameters. And for adjacent rasters, I'm going to type in 0.1. Okay, so I want to add all eight of these inner rectangles to the group, so I'm going to make a range of layers. I'm going to make layer one my range bottom, and layer eight my range top. Okay, so now I'm going to view the range and add all eight of these curves to the group. Although it only looks like I added one layer, if you go to ISO view, you'll see that I added all eight. 
Okay, so let's add toolpaths now and see what this looks like. And as you can see, the bottom of the part will now have double dense rasters. However, I'm still not done. I want to open up the rasters in this area a little bit. For that, we need to make a new group. And all we need to do is under adjacent rasters, select two thou. Okay, so now we can add all eight of these curves to the group. So like before, I'm gonna view the range, add, and if you go to ISO view, you'll see that I added all those curves. And I'm gonna regenerate toolpaths so you can see what it looks like. And as you can see, I now have a nice gap in the raster. And this is gonna help with airflow in the vacuum forming process. If you still have trouble with airflow, we can have these settings for the top of the part as well as under the cavity. For that, we wouldn't use the custom group. Instead, we can go to toolpath, setup, and open up the parameters. Okay, so under enhanced surfaces, I'm gonna change the air gap for visible surfaces and also internal rasters. So this time, I wanna choose one thou. You don't need the gap to be too big here because it may affect the surface finish of your parts. Okay, so go ahead and hit the green check mark and I'm going to regenerate toolpaths. I'm going to go to the top layer and as you can see I now have that one thou gap up at the top. And our tool is now ready to print. I have an example here of a small tool I printed for a customer. This is the bottom of the tool and as you can see the base has two sections. This area here helps with airflow and this area gives it some strength. And that's the end of my tutorial. Thank you for watching. Thank you.